Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here, Spain Speaks. Sunday evening again, 7.35 p.m., back with another live stream. Going to have a look at some of the news that's caught my attention today, some of the comments that have been left on the channel recently by viewers expressing their opinions, of course. And we'll also go into the uh, chat section and see what is happening there. Activity already in the chat section. We've got a super chat from Alan. Just put this one up on the screen here, saying, uh, keep it up. Thank you very much for that, Alan. And uh, let's have a look at some of the chat already. We've got Gino and Isabella coming in uh, on their way to Madrid soon. So I hope that all goes well. Alan has a uh, comment here about the BBC or the anti-BBC thread uh, or the hate thread, which we had on this channel. I mentioned the BBC uh, last week or the week before, and wow, didn't the BBC haters come? Everyone's entitled to their opinion, of course. What else we got going on here? Marianne coming in from San Diego. Looking forward to today's update and background photos. Yep, got some uh, new ones today, Marianne. So we'll put some of those up halfway through the video. And uh, Andrew coming in from a cold and wet southeast London. Lovely picture of Thamora, which was the thumbnail today. I visited Thamora last year, I think 2021. And uh, another Spanish city in uh, Castilla Leon, I think, which surprised me a very uh, nice city so if you ever if you are ever traveling through that part of the world drop into Zamora and also Todo which is a nice wine area there now let's have a look at the first piece of news today and uh, again it is about marijuana Spain's largest marijuana garden an industrial group involved in the production and sale of resin goes bust the name given to the operation by the Guadi Civil is significant, Jardines, because what the anti-drug agents in Toledo have just dismantled is a complex of greenhouses to produce marijuana on a large scale, an industrial plant for drying, processing and packaging weed, and a cachet of hemp plants and buds ready to smoke never seen before. 32,370 kilograms, the largest seizure of this substance in Spain and internationally, says the armed forces in a note on this blow to the drug trafficking. Uh, sorry, on this blow to drug trafficking. 20 people have been arrested in Toledo, Ciudad Real, Valencia, Asturias provinces, where the manufacturing process was carried out to sell marijuana in bulk in huge vacuum packed bags or retail in packets like cigarette packets to numerous points in Spain, to Switzerland, Holland, Germany, and Belgium. So this is probably the third or fourth story uh, in a similar context that we have seen on this channel in recent times. There always seems to be uh, a drug bust of some type by the Guadalajara finding these uh, huge cannabis plantations here in Spain and uh, the drugs sent off to other European ports as well. And I think basically what's happening is that... Uh, uh, astute Spanish business people have decided to cut out the middleman, get rid of Morocco's, uh, get rid of Morocco, and uh, start doing all of the uh, cultivation and growing themselves. And as I said, not having to rely on that uh, product coming from Morocco, uh, from Morocco, where it could get intercepted by the police down there as well, and uh, taking advantage of the very good weather conditions in many parts of Spain to grow this product. But uh, as we saw, 32,000 kilos, the biggest uh, bust in Spain and internationally. So a huge bust there for the Civil Guard. All right, good. Back into the chat section here quickly. Mugger's com uh, Mugger coming in from El Campello. City fan Daryl coming in from Barcelona as well. Uh, Steve coming in as well. Moise coming in. Hello, Stu. Hello, Moise. How all is well? Uh, asking a question is, uh, Moise, let's have a look. Is there any up, uh, update for recession in Spain? Couldn't find on mainstream media, but social media is all about recession. Uh, I don't think Spain has technically fallen into a recession yet, uh, but very, very close. And I think 2022, uh, 2023, sorry, is uh, predicted uh, a recession here in Spain, I think. I think 0.2% growth in the last quarter. And I don't know whether that classifies as a technical recession or not, but uh, there is talk that next year is going to be particularly difficult. But uh, unemployment uh, not showing the effects of the um, 
the economy yet. So uh, we haven't really got to that stage yet, uh, Moeds. But if the other European countries go into recession, no doubt Spain will, because as they say, when Germany sneezes, everybody else catches a cold in the European Union. All right, what else we've got going on? Prussian coming in from Iranian, cloudy Seattle. Chris coming in from Alara in the Sol Valley down there in Andalusia. Bill coming in from York in the UK. Elaine coming in from Chatham, New Jersey. Or Chatham, New Jersey, sorry. Uh, can you explain billion again? The lottery is now $1.9 billion from tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, somebody explained. I think Chris explained, uh, Elaine. It's uh, $1,900 million. Uh, dollars or 1.9 billion in any uh, case it is a lot of money and if you had that in your bank account well I don't think any member of your family for the next 10 generations would have to work basically unless somebody went crazy and lost all of the money but if you uh, got 1.9 in the uh, bank account yeah that's it 10 generations at least of your family would be taken care of I, I would say all right good or, or maybe more who knows? 60 degrees in uh, northern Maine, says uh, Roy. And Amanda coming in from uh, Shropshire in the UK, chucking it down with rain there. Uh, now, what else we got going on here in the news today? Let's have a look at another story. We've got to go through the news today. Quite a few stories to look at, so let's have a look here. Uh, Maersk agrees on project with Spain to make e-methanol for its fleet. Maersk plans to produce up to 2 million tonnes of e-methanol a year in Spain by, 20, by 2030 to supply its fleet of cargo ships and reduce its carbon footprint. The shipping giant and the Spanish government said on Thursday the project will require an investment of around 10 billion euros, $9.75 billion, according to Spanish government calculations, and Spain may enter as a strategic investor. An agreement on the project, which will be partly financed by EU recovery funds, was signed on Thursday in Madrid by Maersk CEO Soren Sko and Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. It forms part of an, of an objective by Maersk, or Maersk, or however you pronounce that, the world's second largest container shipping firm to achieve net zero emissions in its business by 2040. So a 10 billion euro investment there by this company to make e-methanol for its fleet here in Spain. And I think a lot of jobs are going to be created. So good news there from an investment front. International companies deciding to invest here. But as we can see here, uh, partly financed by EU recovery funds. As we know, the government has uh, access to a lot of money to make uh, strategic investments at the moment. And obviously e-methanol is one of those. And this company, as we can see here, trying to... Uh, reduce its carbon footprint instead of using traditional fuels, which, as we know, are quite dangerous uh, for marine life when they spill out of those ships and uh, deciding to go green is that company. So a big investment here in Spain. Good news. Now, what else we got going on? Iggy coming in from Jaén. All well down there, says Iggy. Good to see Iggy. Uh, Elaine's going to buy a few lottery tickets, she says. Uh, Prasen asking about the weather. Michelle in Bailolith off to Bigo tomorrow for three months. Thanks for the wonderful videos and live casts. Thank you very much, Michelle. Hope all goes well with that trip to Vigo. They're on the coast, the Atlantic coast in Galicia. Very nice city. A little bit industrial, but nonetheless, plenty of things happening in Vigo. And uh, get into Pontevedra as well. A nice city is Pontevedra. Miguel coming in from Derbyshire. Como están ustedes? Estamos muy bien, gracias, Miguel. Debbie coming in also. Uh, and uh, Steppenwolf. I stuck up for the BBC, but most of the British run it down. Uh, but they all still use it, though. Yes. So I said a lot of uh, uh, feedback on the BBC for even mentioning the BBC. And I suppose that happens with all of the traditional uh, broadcasters nowadays, whether it's CNN or BBC or ABC in Australia or all of these uh, traditional broadcasters, they do have their enemies nowadays and uh, social media, uh, a lot of people on social media getting stuck into these uh, traditional news organisations. Pat coming in from Galicia, good evening, and uh, Remy coming in from, not sure, but definitely calling, I think Remy's in uh, Catalonia somewhere, 
definitely cooler. That's it. Yeah, here as well. Uh, the wet, the nighttime temperatures especially have dropped, uh, but the daytime temperature not too bad today, around 18 or 19 degrees. So still quite pleasant. Still quite pleasant. Now, next piece of news. This one here. The UGT union union urges Twitter to request an edit before executing its mass redundancy campaign in Spain. The Secretary General of UGT, Pepe Alvarez, has warned Twitter Spain SL that Spanish law requires a cons consultation period to be opened, 15 days to negotiate and to inform the Labour authorities of a collective dismissal, such as the one the workers feel, fear will be carried out at the company here in Spain. This is what Alvarez said this Sunday on his official Twitter account after the 30 or so employees of the social network in Spain told EFE that their fear of the extinction of the technology company's workforce in Spain, which is why they are organising themselves to seek legal advice. The workers have also received a document providing information on the process, such as possible comp compensation, applicable legislation, and the number of workers affected worldwide, which, which amounts to around 50% of the total work a workforce. So the unions getting tough with Mr. Musk and saying that he can't just send an email to people firing them, which apparently is what he's, uh, which apparently is what he is doing with other Twitter employees around the world. They open their inbox. And there's an email from Mr. Musk, not saying uh, hello. My name is Elon. I'm the new the new owner of Twitter. Nice to meet you, but uh, saying that uh, your time at the company has finished. Pack your bags and get out, and we'll give you uh, some type of compensation. I think three months is what I've read on the press. And he's getting rid of half of the workforce, apparently, some 3,700 people. But here in Spain, as we saw, now one thing sticks out for me, and it is that Twitter, which is a billion uh, dollar business, uh, only has 30 workers in Spain. That's one thing that stands out. And the second one is, uh, is to hear that the uh, unions are going into bat for 30 workers, obviously trying to get some publicity as well, and uh, saying that Mr. Musk will have to go through the official Spanish uh, rules and regulations in order to fire people, which means that they have to do this ERE, which is a type of uh, redundancy plan. You can't just fire people in Spain like that. You have to go through an official process, and that's what they are saying will have to happen if uh, Twitter here in Spain Twitter SL Spain closes down, which I think is Mr. Musk's plan. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that story and see what happens. But uh, it's amazing that these uh, multi-million dollar companies or billion dollar companies only have such a, uh, a small workforce, 30 people here in Spain. Mm. Now we're up to 50 likes. I haven't mentioned the like uh, aspect yet, so I'll put the little like icon on the screen now. So if you haven't hit that like button, please do so just below the video. And uh, we'll see if we can get up to around 50, 60, maybe 70 likes today. We will see. All right, like button away. Now back into the chat section quickly, what's going on? F. Borgovic coming in from Valencia. Hello, Welsh Toto coming in from the United Kingdom. Uh, Miguel saying that he doesn't like paying the uh, TV license to fund the BBC. And that's something that um, uh, I had forgotten about, that you have to pay for a, t a TV license in the UK. Don't have to pay for one here in Spain. Uh, I think our taxes pay for the uh, state broadcaster without having to pay an extra tax, an extra license tax. And in Australia also, I don't think that there is a TV license. So uh, the United Kingdom unique in that uh, regard. And uh, a lot of people unhappy to have to pay that money to fund an organization like the BBC. But as I said the other day, in my opinion, they put out, they put out some pretty good content, especially when it comes to documentaries and the like. Investigative journalism, quite good in my opinion. But hey, just my opinion. Erica coming in from Terrassa, Kula. Yes, as we know. Uh, Iggy saying that surely the BBC is not as bad as CNN, Fox News or MSNBC. I try to watch the BBC from time to time. Yeah, everybody has their uh, favourites, I think, Iggy, uh, whether it be uh, one of the ones that you mentioned there. Fox is um, uh, not everyone's cup of tea. CNN is not everyone's cup of tea, of course. They're quite uh, uh, split politically or ideologically. And of course, that's one of the uh, big problems with these uh, with the world nowadays. That people are very, very divided 
ideolog- ideologically. So it's uh, it's complicated. All right, got another dislike. So whenever you mention words like the BBC, the thumbs down come in, come in strong. So keep that rolling, keep it rolling. All right, what else we got going on here? Saludos desde Pacifica, California. Donde hace sol pero fresco. Tete, thank you very much for that. What else we got going on here? Uh, Welsh Toro saying that let's hope the dope doesn't go missing from the police station. Um, we saw a couple of weeks ago that uh, <laughs> the local police in Catalonia, the Mossos de Esquadra, or the uh, Cata- Catalonian police force, had run out of places to uh, to put the uh, the marijuana. And they just had it uh, sitting in the patio areas of the police stations f- uh, for everyone to see. So uh, hopefully the civil guard has a better um, uh, way to destroy the product, which I'm sure that they will, will, whether it goes to some type of incinerator. I imagine that will be the case. But uh, let's hope it's not as bad as, uh, as I said in Catalonia, where they've got storage problems because of all of the crops that they are finding in that part of Spain. All right, what else we got going on? Out of Dodge saying, very sad, a stoner never killed anyone. Meanwhile, alcohol. Yeah, I, um, I've heard that argument quite a lot. It is, uh, it is uh, strange that we accept alcohol and all of the, the, uh, the uh, pros and cons about drinking alcohol, as we know. Uh, but uh, it is uh, accepted in society and the other stuff is not. And that's the reality, or at least here in Europe. I know some states in the U.S. are, are moving forward with that. Canada, for example, Uruguay. But uh, here in Spain, ooh, uh, no talk of it. No talk of it yet. All right, good. Um, what else we got going on here? Today in Granada, for two days, nice and warm. Uh, that's uh, nice to see that the weather's still good down in that part of the world. Uh, what else we got going on? Richard coming in from... Uh, uh, St. Ives, ex El Soto. So obviously not in Spain anymore. And uh, Sui, hola desde Reino Unido. Hello, Sui. Hope all, all is going on. Or Sue, not sure how you pronounce it. Now, next piece of news today. This one here. Sanchez attacks Guindos after ECB report critical of bank tax. Despite the European Union Central Bank's harsh report, the temporary bank tax will go ahead. So far, no surprises. As soon as the report became known, the government anticipated its decision to continue processing this tax, and this has been ratified by President Pedro Sánchez in an appearance this afternoon. But the government can... uh, Sorry, obviously we take note and we will study the report, but the government continues with its roadmap to create this important tax, said Sánchez at a press conference in Portugal after meeting with the Prime Minister of that country, Antonio Costa. So, Sanchez attacking Mr. De Guindos, who is a former economy minister here in Spain, now working for the European Central Bank. And as we saw the other day, the European Central Bank suggested that Spain should scrap that um, extraordinary tax on banks that they have planned. Because according to the ECB, it could destabilize the, the banking system in this country, uh, cause credit issues, uh, credit might dry up. Uh, but uh, Mr. Sanchez, thinking that it was uh, a political plot from Mr. De Guindos, has said that uh, thanks for the advice, uh, European Central Bank, but we're going to do what we we're going to do what we do. We're going to keep the tax in place because it's necessary for Spain to have this tax, according to the government. So the ECB a little bit critical of that tax, and again, people are asking the question: Should Spain uh, be? Uh, a little arrogant when it comes to uh, dealing with the central bank, considering all of the uh, debt that the country is in. That's been the uh, focus of some of the press in this country. Maybe Spain should uh, listen to what the European Central Bank says. That's what people are saying. I don't know. Let us know uh, where you sit on the issue. Should Spain uh, um, not listen to the European Central Bank or should they take their advice and scrap the bank tax? And they also suggested, the European Central Bank also suggested that uh, the banks should pass that tax onto the customers or onto clients. Mm, Thank you very much. Now, let's uh, change the background here today. We'll go for this one here, which is uh, from Iggy, and it's uh, Tembleke. Now, Iggy's in the chat section today, Sunday, so we'll put this one up in the background here. Tembleke in Toledo, I think. Castilla-La Mancha, typical uh, 
uh, uh, Toledo town there with the uh, church bang smack in the middle and a nice uh, square. So thank you very much for that one, uh, Iggy. Uh, and if anybody's uh, in the area, visit Tembleke, says E. All right, good. Uh, City fan, I'm boycotting the World Cup, and this includes any passive watching. Uh, Australia should have won the right to host this World Cup. Yeah, that was controversial at the time, uh, Daryl. Uh, we uh, we were in the bidding there. I think Australia uh, tried to get the World Cup, but uh, lost to Qatar. And uh, there was talk at the time of um, that uh, maybe everything wasn't above board. Uh, I think that's all been forgotten now. Not sure. And uh, the World Cup in what? Um, starting soon, I think. But uh, boycotting the World Cup, says Daryl this year, because obviously of the uh, Qatar situation. All right, now let's uh, put the little like icon back on the screen. Please hit the like button below if you uh, want to, just below the video. And uh, we'll see if we can get up to 150 likes today. Let's see. Now, let's have a look at some more comments quickly. What else is going on here? Uh, Miguel also saying that we should boycott the World Cup, uh, World Cup so there's some sentiment there. Uh, what else we got going on here? Paul, just need some info about starting your residence in UK, i.e. documents. Um, yeah, not sure what you need to do to get the ball rolling there. Paul, probably have to go to the uh, consulate there or the embassy to get the uh, to put things into action. Uh, I think that's what you have to do if anybody has more information for Paul there uh, for starting that Spanish residency process in the UK, please let him know. What else we got going on here? Uh, let's have a look if we can find something else. Brian uh, Wright. Hi, Stu, what has happened to the tourist tax? Has it been dropped in southern Spain? Keep up the good work. Not sure, uh, Brian. I know that uh, some parts of the country have a tourist tax in place. I think the the Balearic Islands uh, have one, and I think Valencia, the Valencian community, was talking about one. But they, I don't think they could get an agreement politically on that. There were some uh, political parties that were against it. Some were uh, for, some were against, as normally happens. So not sure what's happening there, but I uh, haven't heard anything since, Brian. But again, if anybody knows anything different, please let us know in the chat section. What else we got going on here? Just quickly before we get to the next piece of news, Roland coming in from Minneapolis. And uh, what else we got going on here? Let's have a look. Uh, Remy's in saint Feliu, which I think is in Catalonia. Thanks for that, Remy. All right, another piece of news here. Let's have a look. Spain's richest housing estate, La Finca, opens its doors to the children of the super rich. Flats from 900,000 and rents from 4,200 euros a month. The La Finca Group, the former Procisa founder by developer Luis García Cereceda, built its empire and its brand on a large luxury mansions on vast plots of land for the wealthy. Its flagship is the elite urbanization of La Finca, located in a pine forest in Pozuelo de Alarcón, Madrid, the municipality with the highest per capita income in Spain, businessmen, tycoons, artists and sports people have their homes there, seeking something that is an obsession for the company, security and privacy. So there we go. If you've got a spare 900000 to buy a flat in this housing estate, La Finca, on the outskirts of Madrid, and you want to uh, share your neighborhood with important businessmen, wealthy tycoons, uh, Real Madrid, Atletico de Madrid, football players, that's where they live. That's the uh, the most exclusive part of the city. And uh, as we saw there, 900,000 will get you in and uh, rents starting at 4,200 a month. So uh, if you've got a, um, if, you've, you, if, you, if you can afford that in your monthly budget, there you go, La Finca on the outskirts of Madrid. Never actually been there because obviously I don't know anyone that lives there to be able to get in because these are gated communities. And of course, you have to have um, the permission from an owner to get in to these exclusive estates. And that's also where some of the biggest robberies occur also. When football players are playing their matches, people break into these homes and steal everything they've got. So uh, that's uh, one of the issues as well. But uh, when it comes to security uh, and uh, privacy, as we saw there, one of the... Uh, one of the uh, best options for that in uh, in Madrid. All right, good. Spanish word of the day. 
espabilado o espabilada. Canny, clever, intelligent, careful and capable of making good decisions, especially in business or politics. Examples, Marta es una chica muy espabilada. Marta is a very clever girl. So as we can see here, we can use this word to describe somebody who's canny, clever, intelligent, careful, or somebody that's uh, capable of making a good decision in business or politics. Una persona muy espabilada. Espabilada. All right, so you can uh, write that one down if you do not know it already. Now back into the chat section. Let's see what's going on. Uh, plenty of activity going on about uh, the World Cup. Barbara saying that the BBC license is purely an obligatory tax. No one wants to pay it. There we go. Uh, Frank coming in from Crawley, West Sussex. Jose coming in from Tampa, Florida. And uh, what else we got going in here? If we can, plenty of chat going on. And Joy also coming in here from Galicia. Finally managed to get into the live chat today. Joy, hello. Now, I'll just put the uh, like button back on the screen. If you haven't hit the like button, please do so just below the video. And uh, we'll see if we can get up to 150 likes today, which could be possible, could be possible. Now, first piece of news, uh, first comment today, sorry, this one here from Harriet T. Do not endeavor to contact Stu on this number, scammer on the loose. Now, I have to address this because there was a scammer yesterday in the comment section, leaving comments on the video saying, please, this is Spain Speaks, get in contact with me at this WhatsApp number. And the WhatsApp numbers are always separated, okay? So that's a clear giveaway. And these are people that take my profile picture and create an account and um, start spamming, basically. I'm not sure what the end game is for these spammers, maybe some type of financial scam, not sure what's going on. And uh, I think there was a reply on about 50 or 60 comments on Friday's video. Uh, from this person saying, please contact me, this is Bain Speaks, don't do it, okay? I would never ask somebody to get in contact with me through WhatsApp. I would never uh, ask somebody uh, any type of uh, details when it comes to uh, financial things or anything like that. I would never uh, put any type of um, financial uh, investment scam or anything like that on the channel, so don't uh, WhatsApp those numbers, okay? Whatever you do, don't do it. It's just one of the many, many scams that are on the internet, whether it's people sending you uh, emails trying to get your bank details, whether it's uh, things like this telling you to call a number or to write a WhatsApp to a certain number. That's what they are, okay? So don't fall for it, even though you see my picture there. But uh, it said, the comment said, pinned by Spain Speak. So that's a, a, a giveaway at the moment as well, okay? So they try different ways. It's happened about five or six times over the last year. And then when I uh, uh, when I get onto them, they just change the profile picture and start doing it with somebody else's picture there. So it's just the constant thing. So don't fall for the trick of scammers. So um, if you see a reply from me uh, that seems legit, I probably would say thanks for the comment or something like that, or thanks for the information. That's it. But uh, never reply to one of these numbers that are left on the thing or any type of email address or link or anything like that. Just don't reply, okay? Thank you very much, Harriet, for pointing that one out. Now we'll have a look at another comment here from Lacey. Hi, Stu and the community. I'm wondering if there has been any final decisions made around Spain's new digital nomad visa legislation. Well, the good news, Lacey, is yes. Uh, the Spanish parliament the other day approved this new digital nomad law. And it will come into effect apparently around January, February 2023. So in a couple of months' time. I think they just have to work out a few of the minor details, I think. Not sure. But it has been approved by Congress or the Parliament here in Spain. So it's definitely going to go, it's definitely going to go ahead. And uh, very similar to the Portuguese one, which has been in place now for a while. So similar uh, to the Portuguese digital nomad visa system, and basically it gives people the opportunity if they work for a foreign company to live and work here in Spain. I think part of the requirements are that you have to have 80% of your income coming in from a, uh, uh, a non-Spanish company. So let's say, for example, you work, let's say Microsoft, maybe you might work for Microsoft and you're allowed to work anywhere in the world, maybe as a programmer or some, something like that. Uh, you can come and work in Spain on that digital nomad visa. 
think there's also an income requirement, which is around 2,000 euros per month, and uh, a couple of other things regarding taxes and things like that. There's a new tax regime that they're setting up, especially for this visa. For the first four or five years, you're going to be paying around 15% on your earnings uh, instead of the normal 25. Uh, well, 15 is the minimum. Of course, if you make more, you'll pay more. But uh, let's say on the 2000 minimum, you'll be paying around 15%. So we'll see if it is a, an attractive thing for a lot of digital nomads, whether they want to come here or they choose another European Union country because there are... Uh, uh, more than one European country at the moment that has a similar type of visa. Estonia, I think, has one in place. Portugal, as I just mentioned. France maybe has one in place as well. So Spain joining the queue, trying to uh, get this type of worker to come to the country. And uh, so we'll see uh, if or not Spain is successful in attracting digital nomads. But yeah, to answer the question, Lacey, yes, it has been approved by Parliament or Congress here in Spain and uh, should be up and running uh, around January, well, let's say the end of January, because the beginning of the, because at the beginning of January, not a lot happens. All right, let's have a look uh, back into the chat section here quickly. I'll just put the little like icon back, so we'll see if we can get up to 150. Just hit the like button below if you have not done so, please. All right, good. Now, back into the chat section here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Joy's talking about the Russell Howard Hour. Russell is joined by climate activist Greta Thunberg, very funny British comedian and a, f and a great show, this one. Lovely day here, but a bit colder hugs. I have seen uh, Russell Howard uh, on the internet. I didn't know of him before, but uh, he seems like a fairly funny guy. And interviewing climate activist Greta, who is still around. There we go. All right, what else we got going on here? Let's have a look today. Uh, if I can find another one here, one here from Michael asking a question. Stu, do, do Aussies have an accent when speaking Spanish? Also never understood the TV license thing in the UK. Here we only pay for what we need from providers. Yeah, um, I don't think we have a particular accent when we speak uh, Spanish. I just think we have a foreign accent when we speak Spanish. We've got, I think, uh, every English speaker sounds more or less the same when we speak Spanish. Uh, in the same way that Spanish speakers sound the same when they speak English. So whether it's somebody from Spain or somebody from uh, South America, when they speak English, similar characteristics. And I think that's what happens when English speakers speak Spanish. So whether you're from Ireland or the UK, Australia, New Zealand, States, Canada, South Africa, wherever you come from, I think we have a fairly similar accent, uh, which... Uh, People do make fun of every now and again on the TV. You will see somebody mimicking a giri with their accent. Absolutely. Thanks for the uh, comment here, Michael. Now, let's have a look at another backdrop. We'll remove this one. This one from uh, Andres, and it's Galicia. And it's these typical houses that you see in Galicia. Can't remember what they're called. Somebody, no doubt, will tell us in the chat section. But this is a fairly typical site in Galicia to see these um these uh, thatched roofs on the houses, I think. And uh, all throughout the Galician countryside, you will see these. And uh, I think they uh, go back to uh, uh, pre... Uh, I can't think exactly when they would go back, but I think back go, going back to um, Celtic times, I think. I think, but uh, don't quote me on that. All right, back into the chat section here. Guy coming in here. Finally made it to Madrid after three years of dreaming from our home in Montreal. Uh, now we can follow you live. Thanks for the work. Uh, Mary and Guillermo from sunny Madrid. Well, there we go. Uh, Guy or Guillermo, thank you very much for that. And I uh, hope you are enjoying everything that Madrid has to offer. Fantastic. Mary and Guillermo all the way from Montreal, Canada into Madrid. Must be a big change. And uh, as I said, hopefully you are liking the city and uh, getting used to the Madrid way of life. All right, what else we got going on here? Uh, plenty of activity in the chat section. Might not be able to get through everything here, but uh, let's hope. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, what else we got going on here? If I can find one or two more. I'll come back in a minute, hopefully I will. We'll have a look at another comment to keep the content flowing. From Liam, why don't we ever discuss the fact that such 
uh, a high percentage of people assumed that the rates would never rise. Taking a variable rate mortgage was a gamble that as uh, a gamble as simple as that. Don't gamble what you can't afford to lose, kids. Some advice there from Liam. And uh, we saw this the other day that the according to the Financial Times, the wolves are knocking at the door of many mortgage owners or mortgage holders here in Spain, homeowners, I should say, uh, because they've got variable uh, mortgages. And with the uh, recent uh, interest rate hikes from the European Central Bank, a lot of people are being pushed to the to the limits of what they can pay. And there was one example of a lady in the north of Madrid here, Colmenar Viejo, paying 900, and she's worried that her mortgage is going to go up to 1400 or 1300 can't remember. And I'm not sure how it works with the banks here, whether they do give people the option to change uh, the type of mortgage that they have. I'm not sure what the, the fine print of those contracts uh, is. But the fact of the matter was that, as we all know, interest rates were so low for such a long time and uh, people chose that option. They wanted to save a few percentage points on their mortgages. Fixed rates have always been maybe three, three and a half, four percent percentage points higher, I believe. And people went for the cheaper options and uh, now paying the consequences of that. And uh, as uh, Liam points out here, sometimes it is taking a gamble and uh, people are in for a rough time. That is, of course, if they can't renegotiate with their bank. And I imagine that a lot of people are trying to do that at the moment because the last thing you want to do is lose your lose your home uh, because you can't keep up the repayments. But the government's also talking about stepping in and, and doing something there or maybe using that uh, uh, tax from the banks to to uh, help people out. Not sure, but um, yeah, bad news for uh, a lot of mortgage owners in this country that uh, aren't or maybe aren't able or maybe can't change the uh, type of mortgage that they have and uh, at the time chose the cheaper option. And the model, because the I think they choose a model here in Spain. I think they call it the, the French model of mortgages where you pay a lot of interest up front and then you just pay uh, capital off at the end of the mortgage. Uh, I think that's what a lot of people have also. So, uh, yeah, those are interest rates making it difficult for some people to, uh, to pay the mortgage, unfortunately. All right, good. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look what we can find here. Um... Chris is saying that the uh, marijuana will be destroyed destroyed in various points around the area, probably, uh, Chris, or around the country perhaps as well, because uh, maybe someone well, it might creep into somebody's mind that they would try to steal it because it was a, a, it, there was a video on the, uh, on the El Pais newspaper site which showed the, the whole operation. It was a very, very professional operation. Uh, in fact, uh, I've never seen something similar. The, the way that they had everything organized and uh, the machinery that they were using, very, very professional and uh, obviously were making a lot of money, a lot of money before they got busted. But uh, no doubt, Chris, that they will move it around. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, City fan Daryl saying, I think things are much calmer in Barcelona due to its availability of weed. Okay, there we go. Uh, pro marijuana there, uh, Daryl. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I think um, somebody made the comment before that you don't really see people destroying things after smoking a joint, whereas when somebody's had a bit too much to drink, they can get a little bit out of control. I think that's one of the main differences um, uh, between the two uh, items. Brian coming in from uh, La Marina. Enjoyed the walk around Albacete with my faithful companion. Stayed there a few years ago. A very nice, friendly town. I did find the people friendly in uh, Albacete. I've got another video coming up tomorrow, which I will release. And more of a um, me giving a, you know my opinion on the city, as I normally do when I walk around on the, the type of city that it is. I've done various uh, videos like that. And another one coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Yesterday was just a bit of filler content. Didn't have anything else to uh, post, so I uh, did that video where I just filmed walking around the city with my dog for 10 minutes or so. Uh, but uh, it is a, a nice, clean city, and that's one thing that I do point out in the video that's being released tomorrow, just how clean the city was. Surprised me, actually, because uh, compared with what we have here, very, very clean city, Albacete. Oh, or the majority of the areas, not the uh, not the main uh, nightlife area, which uh, was a little bit dirty and smelly the next day. But anyway, 
All right, what else we got going on? Now we're up to 39 minutes, so I haven't got uh, much longer, maybe a, a minute or two. We'll have a look at one more comment here. Uh, this one here from Joe. Uh, not watch for a while as I have been really busy this last month or so. Have got a new job. Certainly have to madruga Tuesday to Thursday to get Thirkanias to work. I have one of the freer bonos. Monday and Friday work from home. Love early finish on Friday afternoon, 3 p.m. Uh, the Spanish hours suit me as I am an evening person. When I visit the UK or Portugal, people seem to eat early. Yeah, this is a, a, a topic that's popped up recently. The uh, timetables here in Spain, difficult to get used to at first, or at least it was for me. But Joe saying there that he prefers it because he's a an evening type of uh, guy. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, some people like it, some people don't. I've got used to it now. I mean, you have to get used to it after such a long time. I have dinner quite late, 8.30, sometimes 9, normally a small dinner. I'm not a, a big dinner eater. Uh, but uh, Joe, they're saying working from home two days a week, Mondays, uh, what days was it? Mondays and Fridays working from home, finishing at 3 p.m. on Fridays, which is very common here in Spain. People finish up at 3 p.m. And um, also uh, getting the free transport on Thirkanias, which is uh, also very, very handy and uh, people saving money with that initiative from the Spanish government on public transport, Thirkanias. So thank you very much for that one, Joe. Glad to see that you are enjoying your new job here in Madrid. All right, now we'll look at one more uh, comment here. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, if we can find something here quickly, I'll just make sure that there's no more super chats or super stickers. I might have missed one. Probably not. Um, all right, I'll just get rid of this comment here. I don't know what it's about. It seems a bit strange, so I'll get rid of that one. Um but I think I'm going to wrap the video up. There's too many comments here to go through. So thank you very much. We're up to 42 minutes. I don't like to keep these live streams going for much longer. Uh, so I'm going to wrap the video up. Thank you very much for your participation today in the chat section. Lots of activity happening there, which was good. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Thank you very much to the super sticker before. Uh, also greatly appreciated. I'll see everybody uh, on Tuesday again, 7.35 for another live stream. Uh, maybe some uh, more news content tomorrow, not sure, but definitely a video, a video about Albacete coming out, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you again in the live stream on uh, Tuesday. Have a good day. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adios.